Uh, what's going on people, it's Amanda YB, back once again, big shout out to my doggy Bob Ross for coming through and boosting up the coin. So, we've got an update regarding the Zille, big bang, bang, I bang you, zang, big, I bang you, zang, okay. <laughs> and the Martin, the Congolese bull, Bacoli. Beef. Now, Ben Shalong, some cats came at me saying, Why be you bugging? Zhang's gonna fight Parker. Not my fault. I didn't tell Ben Shalong to run his big old mouth, did I? He told it. He said, Yep. Ben Shalong said, My fighter Martin de Bolabacoli is gonna fight Zhang next. It turns out we now hear from Zhang, the man himself. I bang you. And here's what he's had to say Zilai Zhang announces his next fight plan after being targeted. By the most avoided heavyweight, Martin Bacoli. Here we go. Where's the quotes? Speaking to Box Nation, Big Bang, I bang you, confirmed that he would instead be activating his rematch clause with Parker. Here we go. Parker was always the one on the top of my hit list. We have a contract. I'm honouring the contract. It's my contractual right to have a rematch. And this is what I'm hoping for. I'm aiming for the knockout. After the first fight, people have different opinions. Some people think I won. Others think he won. But I learned a lot from that fight. And I'll make sure that doesn't happen again. Now, let's start there, people. Listen. I remember after Zhang versus Hergovic. I don't score fights round by round. What I'm interested in is the most definitive moment. Now, that doesn't mean that you can win one you can score one knockdown and lose 11 rounds and win the fight i'm saying i i put more weight on a knockdown though if one guy's just fanny parker yeah he was just fanny and about never looking dangerous particularly at heavyweight heavyweight i'm not really interested in that that's why i had i had zhang beating hergovic cuz zhang popped hergovic's cherry i had zhang beating parker because he popped. People assume now that Parker's on now. Or Parker's back. He beat Wilder and he beat Zhang. Zhang still put his ass down twice. So. That carries more weight than nicking a few rounds on points. For me. And especially when you think about future matchups. There's no way people can consider. I respect Parker. He's certainly come back from where he was at. There's no doubt about that. That said. It, it, he doesn't have the X factor. So if someone was to sit there today and tell me Parker's ranked higher, if we were to do a, a heavyweight top 10, there's no one who's not delusional putting Parker above Zhang. No one. And that's the point I'm making. For me to have said Parker beat Zhang, I'd have to believe that he's better than Zhang and he's not. Zhang popped him twice. So as boxy as Parker may have been, Zhang still found the button twice. You can't win a fight like that, really. Same way, I believe. I believe Wilder won the first Fury fight. Honestly, yeah, Fury was nicking a few bits and here and there. Yes, rounds 11 and 12 were good. But outside of that, it was mid from Fury. And he had to peel himself off the mat. And that was against a basketball player. 210 pounds soaking wet. Who people are now sceptical whether he can even punch. Right? We don't know if Wilder can punch. Because the only person who's ever punched is Fury. And everyone's had a go on Fury, essentially, now. And Garnu had a go. Music had a go. Like, who hasn't had a go? Cunningham had a go. McDermott, John McDermott had a go. Oh, Bagaman had a go. So, it don't mean nothing that the basketball player also had a go. You can't credit him for massive power. Because he just one of many. Right? Many people. To tell the truth, Tyson Fury's chops... Is like an old barbarian whore. Everyone's had a go on it. Wilder's had about four or five goes on it, right? Two in the first fight, two in the third fight. He had four goes on it. Wilder, the 210 pound soaking wet basketball player, has had four goes on Tyson Fury's chops. Don't tell me about how that means Wilder can punch. Do you understand? Anyway, no idea how that's relevant to what I'm talking about, but the point is. Zhang's levels above Parker. That said, I'm tired of Zhang. He's always got some reason, man. 
after the Hergovic fight, he said, oh, I've been sick. Oh, I couldn't train. Oh, I had heart problems. And that's why I was unfit. And since then, I think the Joe Joyce fight, he showed, well, yeah, they only went six rounds or less, right? So he never really got to see the back half. The Wilder fight, though, I'll be honest. Wilder was never going to win that, regardless of Zhang gassing out. I was really impressed with Zhang for like two or three, four rounds. And the next three or four rounds, or two or three rounds, sucked. He had no pace. He was just standing there. Now, the argument is, Zhang even allegedly admitted, oh, I felt Wilder's power. Because Zhang certainly started off well, and then started just standing around until Wilder made that error it seems to be typical of Zhang's fights really good start middle to late rounds he just don't do nothing he just stands there I don't get it Wilder was doing nothing and Zhang was just standing there for a lot of the time in the last few rounds of the fight I just don't, I couldn't understand it he does it every time as well so, and every time he tells us well what happened again and yes he got away with it with Wilder but still, it's like, come on. When are you going to get in shape? His trainer says, oh, he won't train in this time, but next time we will. If a trainer can sit there and say he won't train in, but next time we will, a trainer should never be able to say that about his fighter. Right? If I'm training you and you're not coming to training, I'm not training you no more. Yeah? Well, you're big ass. Because you make me look bad. But these days, got all these new age trainers. Like, I don't know, pick who you want, Sugar Hill or... Um, they're there to pander to the big star. They're not there to actually put someone through it. Back in the day, your reputation used to carry weight, right? Now it's the other way around. People actually go to trainers who are soft, so they can have an easy run. And trainers don't... Res they don't care about their reputation, they just care about getting paid. Sugar Hill, for example, he never should have agreed. A man with morals and honour for himself and respect for himself never would have agreed to have John Fury in the corner after all that's gone on. John Fury sat there and slagged Sugar Hill off. He never would have had it, but he did. He cucked himself for the bag. John Fury might as well have said, Hey, hey Sugar Hill, bring your wife here. Yeah, You go in the cupboard and me and your missus. You cucked. That's what he might as well have done, proverbially speaking. And Sugar Hill probably would have done, to be quite frank. You had to wait. Sugar Hill couldn't even get a word in edgeways if John Fury had pulled up to Sugar Hill's yard here and put him in the cupboard. He'd have gone in the cupboard. John Fury would have knocked the door. Sugar Hill would have opened up and it'd have been like, <gasps> and then John would have been like, okay, Sugar, in the cupboard now. And he'd have gone, can I look, can I peek, can you, leave a, can you leave a crack open so I can look? That's what Sugar Hill be on, he cucked. Do you understand, people? A lot of these trainers are cucked. Zhang's trainers is cucked. Some Nick as well. I'm never that, a young Nick too. He look about no, no more than 40 years old. Some young Nick. What would he know? Yeah? He's fresh out of the streets of Chicago. What would he know about boxing? Or conditioning? He damn sure don't know. Because Zhang Bin had no conditioning. And I don't believe it's a cardio thing where, oh, it's impossible to be fit. I'll never believe that. I'll never believe it. Ever. Zhang is not that active. He's not like he's throwing 70 punches. I think Zhang throws about 30 or 40, maybe even less than that. Let's have a look, actually. Zhang versus Wilder Compu Box. There was, like, no punches going on. And Zhang was just standing there. Oh, look at the Parker fight as well. But yeah, in the main, yeah, look at this, people. Oh, my God. Zhang threw 10 punches in the first round. Then he threw 30. Then he threw 15. Then he threw 13. Then he threw 8. That is despicable, people. He's highly accurate, to be fair. He's hitting 45, 50, 45. He's hitting about 50%. For the last four rounds, he had a 50% accuracy rating, which is cool. But you got to find the trade-off. You can't just sit there and do nothing. And throw four punches or six punches in three minutes. That's one punch every 30 seconds. That's ridiculous, Zhang. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And it makes for boring boxing. That wilder fight sucked. 
Let's have a look as well. Zhang versus. I think this was the same. It's like, how? Uh, what? And Zhang looked gassed against Wild as well. <laughs> He looks gassed about against Parker. I mean, Wilder. Um, Compu box. Let's have a look here. Joseph Parker versus Zhang. Oh my god, Zhang stats. Parker's that much better. Zhang's got 20, 22, 31, 37, 24, 23, 27, 28, 18, 20, 14, 12. Oh my god, in the lot people. In the last three rounds of the fight. Zhang landed eight punches. In nine minutes of boxing, he landed eight punches. Yeah? His training needed to go back to Chicago where he came from and spin the block up, man. You ain't a boxing coach. I don't know what you're doing. You ain't teaching him boxing, though. I don't know what you're doing. He's a big old oaf. He's a big old, quick, powerful oaf, and he ain't letting his hands go. I don't understand. Go back and watch old 49-year-old George Foreman. He'd be in there just like, bosh, just boshing off. He wasn't sitting there, just standing there, like a big old oaf. Big bang, I bang you. Bang something, man. See, Parker, this is the problem, you see. So while Zhang, in the last three rounds, the championship rounds, is lands or throws, I mean, he threw 20, 14, and 12. In the 12th round, he landed no punches. In the 10th round, he landed two punches. At the same time, you've got Parker throwing 36, 41, 33. And he's landing 30 punches. So Zhang lands eight punches in three rounds. Parker lands 30. I guess, really, I maybe I'm wrong, people. I'm sitting there saying, oh, Zhang, Zhang probably lost his fight. He was doing nothing. In the early rounds, though, Zhang was more dominant. It shows on here. Yeah, I'll probably have Zhang winning still, based on these stats. I haven't even watched it, I got bored, I ain't gonna lie, but more time, the knockdowns and but the back half of Zhang's fights, it's a conditioning problem, ultimately. Zhang punched up Joe Joyce and then said, Oh, I'll punch up Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce, I bang you, big bang. Yeah. I punched up Joe Joyce. I sent the light skin. Joe the light skin Joyce back to Las Vegas, back to the Las Vegas nitty hookers that his ex girlfriend Nadine exposed him for putting the beats on. Yeah, and the end of the day, people, Joe the light skin Joyce, he like the Las Vegas nitty hookers. That's what he's, that's his, what's the word? He has an affinity towards Las Vegas nitty hookers. He loved the nitties in Las Vegas. That's what Joe Joyce's ex missus tells us, not my opinion. The old ones, the old dusty nitties is what Joe Joyce be on. Yeah, he he dragging the light skin side down. You got Chris Ubambi Jr. out there with Dan Bilzerian, putting him onto the finest the United States has to offer. Then you got Joe the light skin Joyce down bad. With the nitty, the rock fiends, the tweakers. Joe Joyce, he liked the tweakers in Las Vegas. The tweaker hookers. <laughs> Joe Joyce tests them. Yeah, if Joe Joyce doesn't find methamphetamines in the hooker's urine, he ain't interested. That's what Nadine says. Swear to God, I'm going to put your man on in a few days and expose it. Expose the leaked texts. Anyway, where was it? Yeah, Zhang, man. Tighten up your training. I think Zhang's one of them guys who he knows he's got speed. He knows he's got power. He knows he can box. And he thinks, well, what's the point being fit? I'll catch them. I bang you, big bang. He thinks that, right? What he doesn't understand is, he'd be able, he has the ability, Zhang has the ability to knock everyone out in this division, bar maybe Usyk. Maybe Usyk. If Zhang could keep, out of a 12 round fight on average, Zhang has like 3 or 4 good rounds. If Zhang can keep, them 3 or 4 rounds for 12 rounds, no one makes it out of there. Right? Instead he thinks, well I've got 3 rounds so I'll get him out of there in that time, it's not realistic though. And it wasn't realistic with Parker, ultimately. Anyway. Zhang wants Parker. That makes sense to me. The Bacoli fight's big. I want better things for Bacoli right now. Right? If Zhang beats Parker, that gets rid of the Parker situation. I feel a bit bad for Parker, if that makes sense. I don't want... We need a conclusion to the part. And listen, if Parker beats Zhang, then fair play. He Zhang is no good at that point. 
and Parker's the new guy. But my base case is Zhang writes that wrong and hence the whole Parker thing gets out of the way. At that point, I need to see Bacoli take out a Wilder, an Nganu, a Dillian White, it, no, not a Chisora, he's too washed up, a Joe Joyce. That's what I need to see Bacoli do next. Then we can have the winner of Zhang and Parker versus the winner of Bacoli versus White, which sets up nicely. If Dillian White was to beat Bacoli, which I'm telling you would never happen, I'm putting a lot of money. Bacoli will beat the brakes off Dillian White. Beat the brakes off him. I swear to God that happens because I reckon there's enough UK Dillian White homosexuals to put a whole bunch of coin on Dillian White to beat Bacoli. And I'm going to rob the bank on that fight. Bacoli too big, too strong. He too slick with it. And he's too fresh as well. His chin ain't like Dillian's. I think, and Dillian don't like an uppercut, does he? Bacoli will leave Dillian White like AJ did to spark out. And that, that was a fresh Dillian White. Yeah. He was fresh from back of yard. Do you understand? Fresh yardy. Dillian White was at that point. He. Western. Slash. Eastern. Gen he has Western. Slash. Eastrogenized himself. The coins come in. He's got some Spanish chick ting now as well. You know them Spanish things be cooking. So Dillian White's now some Barnabas now. Anyway. That's what I want to see. I don't want Zhang and pa Bacoli right now. They've both got other things I'd rather see at this point. Anyway, Zhang responds to the Bacoli's call out and says, after Bacoli's win, I think it was a beautiful win. Bacoli's been calling out my name. He says he will knock me out in five rounds and then turned it to eight rounds. When they fight me, they always look at my age and think he's old and I can take care of him. To be fair, I think Bacoli and Zhang are both the same age, about 40. That's the truth. There's no way Bacoli's 31. I drag, I can drag him into deeper water. Ever since the Herkovic fight, they've been saying the same thing. Yeah, D Zhang, P Parker drug you into deep water, though. And I just showed you the stats. So, yeah, people can drag you into the deep water, ultimately. That's a fact. Because in the last three rounds, you threw 20 punches and landed eight. You threw, landed eight punches in nine minutes, bro. So people can drag you into like, deep waters. Parker's not the biggest puncher, he's not the best at anything, but he, he averaged, he out-averaged your ass. So stop playing, man, like you, got, like you got it like that. Like you can't be drug into deep waters. People been doing that to you. But as soon as you get in the ring with me, things become different. They weren't different for Parker, though. I believe we talk through fists, not the talking like that. Anyway, so whatever. <sighs> That's my opinion, people. Let me know your thoughts. Smash the like button, subscribe, like off the bell, 100%. No doubt about it. People stop it.